Hello, this is Paul from Foresight Tech. In this video, we are going to deal with the chain rule again, uh, but we were focusing on the prime notation only, which is more popular than Lebanese notation. Let's see the material. Okay. So first, uh, we will practice the prime notation with four questions. Okay. And then I will introduce the derivative formula for general exponential function. Last, we will go back to fully understand the proof of quotient rule we did before. Here is the chain rule, right? So we need to find the derivative of a composite function of this. All we need to do, okay, is to find the derivative of the outer function time is the derivative of uh, the inner function and then we did this the last video right and then we also introduced the Lebanese notation here we only focus on this prime notation and uh, let me see so I will write something here I highlight so uh, mention so all we need is to find that the derivative of the out right so like uh, here, so I'm going to find the derivative uh, of uh, the outer function. So here is the derivative of the outer function. And then we need to times the derivative of uh, the inner function, right? Okay, so all we need to do is just uh, like this. And for the proof, uh, you can refer to the last video we already did. So here we are going to practice four questions. Okay, so here the first question. And uh, of course you see, and this is a, a composite function, right? And the composite function, we have to use the chain rule. So now how to organize our writing for the prime notation. So I was going to show you from here. So the first, what do we need to do? Uh, I wrote the derivative of uh, prime. So here is uh, the derivative of uh, f. We're going to find the derivative functions. I was going to copy this formula again, this function again, which is uh, this 5x uh, the 6th power plus 2x the 3rd power with the fourth. Can you see? So this is the original function, right? I use this, but break it. I will going to take a divide. Okay, so all we need to do, this is a composite. So do you remember we just the C? And all we need to do is find the derivative of the outer function and find the derivative of the inner function and then times them together, right? So let me put something here. I will put, okay, so shoot here and uh, all we need to do is this. So first, uh, uh, I have to I'll put it here, which is the, uh, this is the outer function, derivative of the outer function. Okay, so it should be times, and then is the derivative of the inner function. Okay, and I will show here. So like this, this is the uh, out derivative of the outer function. And so here is the derivative of the inner function. Okay, so this is all. And uh, what is the derivative of the outer? So we need to know what is the outer function. Or the outer function, so we need to find what is the inner function, right? Which means the decomposition. The decomposition, we set up this is u. And can you see we set up a u is a 5x6 plus 2x raised to the third. If I set up this is the inner, and then what is the out? u raised to the fourth power, right? So it's a u raised to the fourth power. This is the outer function. Take a derivative. Everyone know this is a power function, right? Power function, take a derivative is easy. It's a 4u raised to the third power. Because we know u, I plug u. Okay, so uh, let me put it here. 
So what do we have? So we have four times a parenthesis, five I guess uh, six power, plus uh, two I guess the third power and the raised to the third power, and this is what this is the uh, derivative of the other. Therefore, we already find the first part. So I put here. I will put these results to here. Okay, so which is the first? Let me write. Uh, what do we get? We get a four, and the time is a parenthesis. Five x six plus two x the third raised to the third power. You can see we finished the half, and then we have the second. The inner function is u, right? Uh, is better we write one more step. <coughs> Like this, uh, which is uh, five uh, x uh, six plus two x uh, the third power. Parenthesis uh, take the value. Can you see? Okay, so here is uh, uh, the derivative of the inner. Of course, you can direct the rod. However, this is a little bit longer. So my suggestion is to put the one more step. Okay, what we did in this step chain rule. This is. Uh, Chain rule, the most important the rule. Okay, in calculate one. Now what do we get? We only need to find the derivative. Okay, so of the second step. Uh, let me copy the first. The first step uh, is already get. So I uh, copy the results, and then times what is the second? Can you see? The second should be what? Should be uh, a linear combination of power, right? A linear combinational power is the linear property we have to use. So what do we do? We use a linear property, okay? And I uh, put here is a linear property. So you should remember this. And then I put the results. And the uh, five times six is thirty. I guess with the new power is six minus one is five, right? And the second. Three times two is a six, and the uh, x with the new power is two, which is a three minus a one. Can you see? Now is almost, but a, a little bit more. We cannot stop here. We need to simplify. Of course, you know how to simplify. Can you see the first uh, x with the third power is a common factor. We can factor out, and on the second term, six times x square is the common factor. We factor out. Okay, so I show one more step. We're going to simplify. Okay, I will. Um, so let me see. I will factor out. Okay, so I will factor out the comma factor. What do we get now? Okay, so we have this four, and the first factor is this. I guess the third power, but you don't miss. Here we have another third power raise. Okay, so here the first. What is the second common factor, which is six times x square? Okay, that's all for the common factor. And then what are we left? We're going to put the five x raised to the third power because we already take a third power out, right? And then plus two, and then raised to the third power is the first. What are left for the second? Which is a five uh, I guess raised to the third power plus one. You see, and this step is just a factor out. Okay, so almost right. The last step is going to simplify. And uh, after we simplify, we get this: four times six is twenty-four, uh, and the x is the base. What the power? Three, three, which is the power rule. So we have nine plus two. We have、uh, eleven, right? That's the basic exponential rule we learned a long time ago. So I copy the another two terms, which is this: five x the third power plus two raised to the third power, and then times five x the third power plus one. Okay, so this is the final answer. And、uh, of course, I will go back a little bit. And then for other questions, I will going to、uh, simplify the version. I, we do not need to write all this stuff, or write all this stuff. I will going to clean this. You will see, 
and that the writing is much more clean. Okay, so we're going to do this. Uh, can you see I uh, erase all this? I just have you to uh, let you have a look. So what do we really need to write down to let the other people understand. Okay, I even erase, even erase, I even erase this. Can you see? This is the clean version. We what we have to do. Okay, so for example, if we don't write and the stuff that are cleaned, can you find what is here? Which is the derivative of the outer? What is here? The derivative of the inner, which is the chain rule, right? Okay, how do you find this? All we need to do is just see the inner this big group as u in our mind. Okay, therefore the outer function is u raised to the fourth power. You know that's the that's the word that the power function. Take a derivative exactly is this. And don't put the u here, directly put the what is u, the whole function. And the u take a derivative copy. Okay. So can you see? This is much clear. For other questions, I will directly go to this version. Let me take them back. So this is what I wrote to you. Um, so I will change it a little bit, don't confuse you. Okay, so here is what, so I will change your color. So you see, that's what we get. This is a red color. Okay, and uh, does this make sense to you? This we call it the prime notation, right? Then we're going to see another two questions, another three questions together. Here. This is another one. Okay, so what do we have? We have a composite function. Why is it composite? Some probably you will think. Uh, this is a cube root radical. I can change the radical into power. And but finally, we have kind of full power. However, the base is not x. Therefore, that's a composite function. So what do we do? We have to use the chain rule, right? We have to use the chain rule. Let me go to write it down again for the prime notation. What is the prime notation? So what are we going to do? I will going to directly write this. F prime, right? Equals. Of course, this function, as we just said, I will change it to kind of a power function. So what is the base? Base is x squared minus 1. What the power? One third is on the bottom. That's negative exponent, so we put the negative exponent, which is a one third, negative one third. Can you see? Okay, so I put the bracket. I put the bracket, and I was going to take it prime. This which means uh, our function looks much better now, right? Okay, another step is what? Chain rule. Chain rule is the most important. Let me write down here. Because now is a composite function, you should see the composite function very clear, right? Okay, so we have to use a chain rule. We use the prime notation. Okay, so chain rule tells us what do we do. Uh, I ignore all the other step. Okay, so the first part, can you see? I put the dot here, which means the first part is a derivative of the outer. The second part is the derivative of the inner. That's all we need to do. So what is the derivative of the outer? Everyone, you can see easy. The inner function is x squared minus 1, right? So you can see this uh, a group u in our mind. Therefore, the outer function is u raised to negative. So what this? This is a power. A power function is the easiest. Okay, let me write down. The power function is take down the power, right? So negative one third. And then the base, u. But I don't write u because u is x squared minus one, right? What is the new power? Is the older minus one. Negative one third minus one is negative four third. Can you see? Here we already get. Super easy, right? Now we go into the second step. What is the derivative of the inner? I said uh, I recommend you to write one more step. So I just copy the inner function, which is x squared minus 1. And uh, we put the prime. Okay, so you know what to do. Uh, one more step now. 
So get it divided of x square minus 1. This is easy. 1 take a divided equal to 0. x square is the power. So easy to get it divided. I'll copy the first. And uh, this is uh, the first part already done. That we're going to times the second should be how many? 2x, right? Easy to get. Okay, the last step we're going to put the together to simplify. 2 times negative 1 third is negative 2 third. And this x is better, I'll put it to the beginning. So it looks better. And then times x, you know this is not a times, this is x, okay? This is x. So we have x squared minus 1 raised to the negative 4 over 3. See, this is the answer already. Now, you see the prime notation looks much more simple than before, right? Okay, so all the other questions in the future, we just do this way. And uh, we're going to practice one more here. Okay, but look at it. So our function is dr, a composite. Or the first we see is a, a product, right? Here, this is a function exponential function and the sine function, you look at it's just a product. So what do we do? We can use a product the rule. However, if you look in the detail, sine is not exactly the basic sine function. It's a composite, right? Sine composite with the linear function, okay? And the first part is the same, composite. What does it mean? Composite function, we have to use a chain rule. This is the basic. So now we're going to do the questions. What do we do? I will follow the rule again. Okay, so let's, oh, sorry. Let's see what do we will get. Okay, so I will going to write the primary here. The, the derivative equals uh, a copy of the function e a t times the sign parenthesis b t. I wrote a big uh, break, take a prime, right? Of course, we just said this is a product. So we have to use the product of the rule first. We have to do this step uh, first because this is a product, right? The dividable product is this. Let me write it down. Someone, and uh, I think you remember what is the product, right? The first they take a prime, and then plus the second they take a prime. Okay, so the first uh, e a t take a prime, of course, times the second uh, term, and then plus the first uh, function times the second uh, function. So uh, here I have to write the okay a bracket sine b t take a prime, right? So this is the product of the rule. And then now you see, so even the first and the second, each one all both are chain, are composite function. Okay, so we have to do what? We have to use the chain rule. Now the second step is uh, this. We have to use a chain rule. We have to do. Uh, let me write a little bit of detail so you can see what is the chain rule again. And the first uh, is a big term, right? The first uh, time is uh, the second. Do you remember this? Okay. And how to do? What is the first term, which is the divided with the outer? What is the outer function? So what is the inner? Inner is uh, a times t. Can you see here? The inner function you can set up u is the power. A t is u, therefore the outer is e raised to the u's power. Natural exponential, the easiest natural exponential take the variable equals e the self. Okay, so is the e raised to the u. What is u? A t. So that's good. This is what we find that the derivative of the outer. Now our time is derivative of the inner. Uh, as the rod, this step, this is the inner, and the take a prime. Okay, can you see this is the first? I will going to times the sine bt. Okay, so plus et, I copy this. The second is the same. What we need to do is what? So the same like this. Okay, so the middle is uh, this. Okay, what is the this chain rule? 
Okay, the inner is very easy to see. Okay, the inside function so b t is u. Therefore, the other function is sine at u. What is the derivative of sine? Cosine. Okay, so all I need to do is write the cosine at u. What is u? U is b t. See, this is the outer function, the derivative of the outer function. Um, times uh, or what? Derivative of the inner, the inner function is bt. Of course, you know, take a derivative. Okay, so almost. And then what do we need to do? We just uh, get a derivative of this simple function, divided of this simple, simple function, and then simplify. That's all for these questions. Almost, uh, let me get this. What do we have is e a t, right? Times, you know, what is a t derivative? Is a. Right, and then times the sine at b t, and the plus e a t, and the times the cosine at b t. Right, and the b t take a derivative is b. Okay, so I times one more b. Uh, the last, uh, so I can do this. I can factor out all. I was going to simplify. If someone you like, you can do this step. Uh, cannot do uh, much simplification a little bit. What we can do, we can factor the common factor e raised to the eighth power. I factor the e a t out. Can you see what we left is this? The first is a times sine b t, right? The second is b times. I put the b at the beginning, so b times cosine. At uh, b t, can you see that's the final already? Okay. Uh, I hope you see all these questions. We do the similar way, right? Similar way of prime notation of the chain rule. That's very, very, very important in calculus one. And please practice more. Okay, you can find more questions in the textbook. To practice, and now we have one more questions to practice together here. And how do you do? Um, so you see, this is a very complicated function, but you know what? This is a composite first, right? So the square root is the outer function, and the inside or the inner function is a fraction. Okay, for fraction, what do we need to do? We use quotient rule. Now. That's going to rule. This time we have to use quotient rule later. So the first step, however, the first step, uh, what do we do? We cannot use a quotient because that's a composite first. So I was going to rule s prime. Okay, this. Uh, a copy still. Okay, so a copy this. This is a big term. Okay, it's so big. So one plus sine t. 1 plus cosine t, parenthesis, take a prime, right? Okay, so why I will not write the square root as a, the power function? So the power should be 1 half. Why? Because we have a square root of x, take a derivative with 1 over 2 times square root of x. You remember that? So I hope you memorize. So I directly use that result. And then I can write down easily. So what do we get now? Of course, this is the chain rule. Where we use now we use the chain rule, right? So I use the chain rule here. Why? Because can you look at it? this function is the composite function? Okay, the inside or the inner function is a fraction. The outer function is square root of u. Okay, so which is a square root of u, take a derivative, and I put it here. So all we need to do is do this. Okay, I find that the out derivative of the outer, which is a one over. Okay, so you know what? Two times the square root of u. Okay, two times the square root of u. So what is u? U is a big term. Okay, is this so big? 1 plus sine t, 1 plus cosine t. Can you see? 
and the, because the square root of u take a divided with someone you forget it. Uh, let me write down here is why we have this because of uh, square root of uh, u take a derivative do you remember the results is 1 over 2 square root of u right we just use this results okay so we have this is the derivative of the outer now we get the derivative of the inner which is uh, what is this the inner function now is a uh, fraction okay let me draw down the fraction is like this 1 plus sine t 1 plus cosine t big parenthesis okay take a prime and the, from here you see we cannot directly write down uh, the results of the inner function right so that's why we have to put the prime here and for all the previous questions i said i hope you can write one more step you know this is the reason okay in the future if we meet the complicated this kind of question we have to write it okay in this way okay so what do we do now all we need to do is find the derivative of a fraction or quotient right what do we do use a quotient rule let me write down here quotient rule now but this is a little bit longer Okay, so I put all we need is the uh, quotient rule we have to do now. Okay, so let me write down here. So the first I have to copy. Okay, this is a big term. It's a little bit long. Be patient. Uh, no, I will going to simplify. Simplify a little bit. So how to simplify? Uh, we can do this. This is a fraction on the bottom or flip. Can you see? I flip this and then so this uh, fraction will go to the top. will get much easier. Okay, so and you see now what I'm going to do. I was going to flip and uh, all we're going to do is just simplify a little bit. So 1 over square of uh, 1 over 2 and then I will put this to the top that does it make sense? Okay, after we flip the fraction, so I could do 1 plus cosine t, 1 plus sine t. See, we flip the fraction already, okay? And uh, how to do now is uh, going to times, but this we use the quotient to do a little bit longer, so I put it here. I put it here, times, uh, because it's very long, so I have to do this way probably this long okay and then I wrote what is the bottom can we look at it? so we're going to find the derivative of that okay so here derivative of this fraction so the quotient the root tells us the bottom square right which is a 1 plus cosine t parenthesis square and then the top you remember is the first which is the top take a derivative okay and then minus uh, let me write it down first here. In the middle, remember, is a minus, right? So the first part, I take a divided, which is 1 plus sine t. Top, I take a divided, times the bottom, 1 plus cosine t. Be patient, there write a lot of stuff, okay? And the, the second term is the top. And the time is derivative of the bottom. Okay? Is this the quotient rule? Definitely. Okay, what do we do now? Uh, let me go down a little. So you can see, now all we need to do there is just uh, easy. Uh, because of what? The sine and the cosine take a derivative is easy to get. Okay, so almost together. Now is uh, this result. I copy the first step. It's a 1 plus cosine t. 1 plus sine t. Okay, so the times. Okay, is uh, the long. I was going to do again. And uh, let me see, is the like this long? Okay, so what is the bottom? So I will see a little. This is the bottom. Uh, the same. 
Okay, so I will copy one plus cosine t squared. What is the top now? One take derivative is zero. Sine take derivative is cosine. What do we get? So get this cosine at t. Uh, if you like, put a parenthesis times one plus cosine t, right? And the minus. And I copy this the first. But the second term cosine take derivative don't miss this is negative uh, sine t. Okay, so now all we need to do the last step is going to simplify. Okay, is one half times this square root. One plus cosine t. One plus sine t. And this time the time is I can write because a little bit short. This fraction is much shorter. Okay, probably like this longer. Uh, the bottom, I copy again. One plus cosine t squared. I will going to uh, distribute. It. So the first term we have cosine t, and the plus cosine squared. I leave it to the end. Okay, and then minus one times negative, which is a positive plus sine t, right? Uh, we're going to plus sine t. Okay, have two terms left. What is the two terms? Okay, so let me write the two terms. You see what we need. The first term is cosine squared. And the plus, the last term is sine squared. Do you remember what is cosine squared plus sine squared? And the Pythagorean tells this one. Okay, so I just directly simplify. I get the number one here. Okay, so this is the final results. Can you see? And this question is a little bit long. However, we do step by step. The first step we use chain rule, and then we use quotient rule. And these are all the questions. And the last we're going to so here I was going to find the derivative. I was going to introduce what the derivative formula for a general exponential function. Can you see here is the formula y. Okay, we did not introduce this formula before. However, I introduced this formula. Let me write down uh, e, I guess, take uh, the derivative equals e x. Is this true? Yes, we have this. This is a natural exponential function. Derivative of this is equal to it itself. Uh, does these two results are consistent? Yes. Can you see? The general formula, if we plug a equals e, a or n at e, of course, equals 1. Therefore, it's the same. Okay, so, which means it's consistent. Now, how to prove the general? All we need is use, okay? So, use this, the old formula, okay? And also composed with the uh, chain rule. So, why we have chain rule? Of course, we need to merge these two together. A is the base for that one general and then here is e the base are different do you remember uh in trigonometry we learned how to change the base right and then let me write here so all we need to do is just change base if someone you forget how to change base i will show you here okay so let's show how to change the base the first thing is uh, a raised to the x the base is a and I will change it to the base of e. Now, what is the power? The power is ln at a raised to the x power. And the, which rule we use? Okay, so here, what do we use? Because we have this, we have a inverse rule. Do you remember? Of uh, logarithmic logarithmic functions, we have uh, this inverse rule. And the second is the power, right? So we have a power rule we used before. If so you remember, the power rule gives us ln at a power function. So we can take the, the we, we have this kind of power. X is the power, and you can take it down the power. So what do we have now? Is e raised to the x times ln at a. Of course, what this this power rule. And uh, this is a power rule of uh, logarithm. OK, 
Okay, we learned that from trigonometry. If we have this, now you know. If we're going to take a derivative of the general exponent, exponent function, exponential function, which is to take a derivative of this, or this, this is a composite function. Natural exponential compared with the linear function. Of course, chain rule we can use now, right? So easily to get the answer almost. Can you see? So now we're going to take a derivative of a raised to the x power. So easy. It was just to take a derivative of this composite function. Because we have a chain rule, so all we need is use the chain rule. Uh, let me put here. So all we need to use is the chain rule. Okay, what is the chain rule? And you see, the chain rule is this. Is the first time is the second, and it is this. Let uh, me write down. Okay, multiplication, right? So the first is the outer function. So what is the outer function? We need to set up uh, x times e raised to the s power. This is u. Therefore, the inner function is e. Uh, the outer function is e raised to the u's power. Natural exponential. Take the derivative is itself. So I wrote it down. Can you see? Here is the derivative of the outer. Okay, times derivative of the inner. And uh, I put it, the inner function is x times a, ln a. Take a divide. This is the chain rule, the last step we just simplify. Okay, can you see? The first term, okay, from the beginning, we go back to the original, which is uh, a raised to the x power, the general, right? What is the second the linear function? So we have the coefficient left. Okay, is this the formula? Yes, so this is the formula we get. And uh, we have the last one. We go back to the quotient rule. And we proved that before. So do you remember? And if someone remember the previous video 3.22, when we dealt with the, the first time there was the quotient rule, I give you this proof. And at that time, we cannot fully understand what is this red one mean. We call it this is a chain rule. Now we're going to understand it. Okay, of course, I will show you a little bit. The first we wrote the uh, quotient as the product and then use the product rule, right? Okay, so let me write here. So the first step, of course, we understand very easy is the product rule. And the second, can you see? 1 over g, take a derivative. I wrote the red, this we call it the chain rule. Okay, so here is chain rule. And I will show you how to understand the, this chain rule. Remember chain rule, all we need to do is what? And uh, let me write, so we have outer divided with the outer times divided with the inner. So the first part should be the divided with the outer. The second part should be the divided by the inner, right? Okay, so let me show here. And the first should be the outer. The second should be uh, the inner, divided by the inner, of course. Let me put the arrow so you see. See, this is the outer should be here, right? And uh, we have the second is the divided by of the inner, okay, is here. Uh, why? Why the first derivative is like that? So, of course, uh, we need to look at the, the composite function. 1 over g is the composite function. Why? Where is the inner? Inner is g, okay, the denominator. What is g? Because g is a function of uh, x. If I write a little bit, uh, can you see the decomposition is like this? The inner is uh, g at uh, x, okay? And now, if we plug u here, so what? And the, the outer function is a 1 over u is the outer function. And uh, we find that the derivative of that, can you see? The derivative of 1 over u, do you remember? Is 1 over u squared put the negative, right? So we have that result before. And then we put the u back, which is g. And then we have g squared. Can you see? If I put this uh, result to the beginning, okay, to here, 
Is this the proof? Yes, because the first term can you see here. So now the first term is uh, the derivative of the outer, and the second term, of course, is the derivative of the inner. And the last step is just uh, simplify. Okay, so that's the proof. So I hope you now you can fully understand how did we prove the quotient rule. And that's uh, all for this topic. And uh, thank you. If you have any questions for this topic, please leave your comments. If you like this video, you are very welcome to subscribe to my channel for more videos in the future. In the next video, let's see. And we are going to deal with the implicit differentiation, which is a, a method that you find a derivative from an implicit equation. I hope to see you next time. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye.